VR is definitely my favorite hobby and way to enjoy digital media, but let's be totally honest here. The actual act of being in VR can sometimes be a bit of a hassle, so I've devised a little list of things to make your life that much easier so you could keep enjoying your virtual world. Okay, so imagine this. You're in Pavlov or Beat Saber, you're in your groove doing your thing, and over time the lenses get foggier and foggier the more time you spend in game. Eventually, it reaches a point that you have to lift up your headset and either look for a microfiber cloth to wipe your lenses, or worst case scenario, you use your shirt to wipe your lens and oops, your lens is permanently scratched. Take it from my experience, it's actually much easier to do than you think. And that's where this little tip comes into play. Strap that handy microfiber cloth right to your cord. It is always within your reach just an arm's length away, but just far enough that it stays out of your way and not bothering you. If you have a Valve Index, then congrats, your hack just got upgraded. You have a personal microfiber fiber cloth front compartment built right into the headset. Now you no longer have to search for that cloth that seems to never be in the spot that you last saw it. Next up, one thing that I have used religiously since I originally tried it was some sort of mat or indicator on the floor, in the real world. This can be really anything, all it needs to be is something relatively small and a different floor texture than the ground surrounding it. I guarantee you that if you use one of these mats, you will trigger that immersion breaking guardian telling you to back up way less often. And while you may think that having something on the floor that grounds you to the actual reality will break your immersion, generally really quickly you will subconsciously notice where you at in relation to your surroundings without even thinking about it. I have generally gotten better at multiplayer VR games just due to this alone. As an added bonus, you could even add an extra texture to the front or wherever your grounded direction is and you'll not only have a subconscious sense of where your position is in the room, but also a sense of direction. All in all, this doesn't just improve your own experience and usually prefer performance in hardcore games, but it also makes new users of VR have a far easier time getting used to the disorientation. Have you ever been playing a game in VR and there happens to be a lot of rotational movement in game and before you know it you're caught in your cord nearly tripping over it? Well, if a wireless adapter isn't in your budget or if your headset just isn't compatible with one, another great option is a pulley system. It's the same one that I've been using for almost a year now. I've already kind of talked about it at length on this channel, but it's been a while so I'll I'll give a quick rundown. Basically, you route your tether through a series of pulleys, and the last pulley holds the tether over your head and keeps the wires out of your way. It's cheap, usually at only around 20 bucks or so, and they generally work really well. I've actually seen some people use dog leashes for the same thing, so this trick is pretty versatile. I do actually have a video already detailing the complete setup, but I'm probably going to make an updated one, as I ordered a far improved version of the same setup, so keep on the lookout for that. It's definitely the best alternative to a wireless adapter, not to mention a 15th of the price. Obviously not nearly as good as a wireless adapter, but yeah, you get the point. So back on the fogging issues and heat in general. VR can get hot. I mean, it makes sense. You're playing a game that you often move around in with a screen attached to your face, just inches away. Now, I usually get around this issue entirely by setting my air conditioning to like 70 degrees Fahrenheit and having a fan running, but I understand this isn't always an option for people. However, getting Getting a small fan that you can direct toward your body should be possible. But wait, this actually serves an amazing dual purpose. Not only will it keep your head, face, and body cooler, and your HMD cleaner because you're not sweating so much, but you could actually use the fan itself as a positioning tool. You'll be able to feel the slight breeze of the fan and which direction the fan is blowing. So even if you don't have a floor mat to keep track of your position or rotation, you could actually use the wind direction to orient yourself while you can't actually see your real reality. If you have your fan set up in the forward position of your play space and you feel the breeze on your back, you know that you are turned around. And same thing with any other direction that you turn. This for me was kind of one of those forehead moments, like Oh, duh. Almost an entirely passive way to not only keep yourself cooler and enjoying VR for longer, but actually have a more enjoyable experience in general in VR. Okay, now this one has nothing to do with your own personal experience in VR, but more about actually sharing that experience. I know one of the first things I wanted to do after getting my headset was to show everyone around me just how cool this thing was. Now, this is a special moment. Right here in these few crucial seconds, you're showing a buddy why you just 
just spent a few hundred dollars on a completely non-essential first world escaping device. And it could either convince them that VR sucks and will never be good, or they'll have that holy crap moment and won't be able to sleep without thinking about getting into VR. This means, of course, no roller coaster simulators. Please. If someone's first experience in VR is one that makes them nauseous, they may leave with the feeling that VR just isn't for them. So it's your duty to start someone off with a nice, calm, but immersive experience. If they handle that well, then move on to something more intense like Robo Recall. And at the first signs of motion sickness, pull them out and let their stomach calm down. One great experience if you're on the Oculus side that really does the trick for brand new users is First Contact. And if you're on the Steam side and not wanting to run Revive and all that, just give the lab a go. I'm serious, this first impression can legitimately convert someone from a naysayer to a VR user, so be nice and easy with it. Only two more. This is simple. When you're done playing in VR, use a VR lens cover of some type, or just put your headset in a completely shaded place away from windows. This is pretty commonly known, but burning in your headset screen due to any sunlight can easily damage it by the sun's beams focusing through the lenses and therefore burning your screen. Believe it or not, this can literally happen from seconds of direct sunlight, but luckily it's also really easy to avoid. What I used to use was a homemade lens cover on my headset whenever I was done, because you never really know when someone may move your stuff or curtains may open, it's generally just a safe thing to do to protect your monetary investment. Nowadays, I literally have my headset hanging on my ceiling or a wall. Of course, this has its own downsides, but as long as you're confident in your hanging skills, it doubles not only at keeping your headset completely away from sunlight, but also keeps your gear away from animals looking for a snack, which I also have experience with that. And finally, which is actually my favorite little life hack or tip, and I probably should have put it towards the beginning of the video, but hey, if you made it this far, here's a special one just for you. If you aren't happy with your microphone quality on your headset, there are a couple things you can do to immediately improve it, and best of all, it's completely free. Actually, this is kind of starting to sound like I should make a video on this just on its own because it's so awesome. So when I record these videos, I do a live EQ of my audio using a free software called Voice Meter Banana. Basically, you download it, select your input microphone, and then you can mess with all these settings. Now, now everybody's setup for your voice may be different, if you have a high pitched voice you obviously wouldn't copy the exact settings that I use, and same for a low pitch. But for reference, here's what I use. So yeah, select your input microphone, here I'll select my index mic, then in Steam settings I can change my recording input to voice meter output, or virtual audio cable. Instantly your voice will sound fuller with better balance between highs and lows, and just in general be more pleasant to the people around you. This should work for any PC VR headset out there, and all you have to do is tweak or find a preset that works for you. If you don't have something like a mod mic, it could really give you that nice extra boost for free. And even if you do have an upgraded mod mic on your headset, it will still make you sound better. Now this may sound annoying for the first few times you set it up, but believe me, it will become second nature to just automatically open up voice meter and switch your virtual cable after a few times of doing it. And in my opinion, a little bit of work can net you a pretty substantial boost in audio quality. Just mess with your settings or find a preset that works and you you're golden. Were there any tips or life hacks that I left out? Are there any that stood out to you in particular that you're going to use? Drop a comment and let me know. I love seeing it. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love. Thrill out.